The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The infestation of spotted lanternfly nymphs hopping about from leaf to leaf has many folks in our region on the hunt for sprays which won't affect grape leaves, tomatoes, and large leafy vegetables. I, however, have taken up a new tactic, a new hobby, if you will. It's the Bug Assault Black Fly 3.0, it was just $54 with tax over at my local Ace Hardware, highly effective 427 certified kills through sunday and if you find that weird then clearly you don't know me very well i'm jim hutchinson with the new jersey delaware bay edition of the fisherman magazine and this invasive species the spotted lantern fly it was first detected in pennsylvania back in 2014 and has been proliferating ever since and today, July 27th, 2023, they're all over the region, especially at the Jersey Shore. And again, on those big leafs, the U.S. Department of Agriculture calls them a threat to certain crops and plants, uh, including grapes, apples, walnuts, tobacco, and hops. Hops, my friend, hops. You'll see the eggs on broad leaf, which they say should be scraped away and destroyed. I talked to my local garden guy not long ago. He's not exactly sure how damaging these lantern flies really are to crops, except to say with those egg sacs on the leaves, like tobacco, there's your damage. Who wants to roll them and smoke them if they've got lantern fly eggs all over them? But if you're looking for a little added fun on Saturday afternoon after doing some heavy duty fluking in the morning like I did this past, Saturday, I highly recommend an afternoon hunt. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. Now, I bring this up because a few years back, Bobby Norgard had an article in our weekly edition of the Fisherman Magazine on how to turn lemons into lemonade with those lantern flies, tying the spotted lantern fly pattern, which is very much like a stone fly or a cicada pattern. Uh, yes, Bobby also showed us how to tie the cicada pattern back in 2021, once again, showing that opportunity comes in all shapes and sizes. That was Brood X, uh, as you remember back in 2021. Occasionally here in my backyard, you might hear the regular cicadas blowing right now. But those articles that appeared in our weekly edition appeared at thefisherman.com and they were exclusively for subscribers because you only have so many visits at thefisherman.com before the window comes closed. Now, those fishermen subscribers this week will receive our glossy monthly edition sometime this week. It is chock full of helpful, informative articles about New Jersey, Delaware Bay fishing opportunities throughout the month of August, these dog days, wolf of summer. Now, mid-range yellowfin, boy, if it, I wish it was like the 2021 triple wreck season. I really do. That was epic. Last year wasn't so much. And we're still waiting for this to, to pop open, that mid-range yellowfin bite. They're popping up here and there. But again, we haven't had that action that we saw two years ago. And hoping at any point we'll catch lightning in a bottle again. But you'll see when the August edition arrives in your home or on newsstands, your local Wawa and local tackle shops, yellowfin on the cover. And also inside the magazine, when you go to the glossy section, it features a spotlight on kayak albies. Chris Paparo takes a scientific look at summer flounder underwater. Nick Honicheski helps us strategize for working amongst the boat fleet out there if you're looking for a bluefin and yellowfin in the coming days. There's also a skiff feature from Captain John Raguso and a sudden uh, public fascination piece by Captain Al Ristori on sharks, yes, just in time for Shark Week. You'll also find a humorous look at 
Camping versus glamping with my friend Rick Methot. Head farther inside the August edition of the Fisherman Magazine this week when you get your copy. Eric Burnley has a spotlight on Delaware Bay. Um, you've also got action from Nick about mackerel, kings and Spanish. Yeah, we're starting to get a few reports of king mackerel and it's only a matter of time before the Spanish mackerel turn on hot and heavy. There's a spotlight on New York City fishing opportunities. If you find yourself going up there for a play or to spend the day with the family, yeah, you can tuck away some fresh water gear in the back of the truck. Nobody will know the difference if you sneak over to Central Park for a little while. Also, Pedro Ildefonso, young man who has been in this fishing report various times over the last couple of years. I issued him a challenge during the winter show season. I said, why don't you write a, an article about TOG? Well, August 1st, we get TOG back in the Jersey Shore. It's a one fish bag limit, but it's perfect for hitting those bulkheads and jetties. And Pedro's tactics could also help put you into a South Jersey sheep's head uh, as well. I also slipped in uh, aboard the big Mohawk recently. and We've got an article in there by me about fishing that sticky stuff off of Monmouth County. That's definitely where we're going to see more of those doormats uh, on the horizon. They're, they, the rattlesnake, sea girt reef, and of course the deep water. Again, that is all inside that August edition this week in the Fisherman Magazine. We are uh, a, a week out from the month of August, but settling into the mid-summer mid exotics at this point. And that's going to carry us through into Labor Day. Out of Island Beach State Park comes word from Rich Rossellini uh, from Pine Hill. He checked in at Grumpy's over the weekend with a four pound pompano. A regular visitor at the Jersey Shore, those pompano, many are on the smaller side, so four pounds is pretty solid. There's no New Jersey state record for pompano, none in Delaware that I see either, but the IGFA world record Florida pompano, which is what we see these areas, Eight pounds, four ounces. That was in 1999 in Port, Port St. Joe in Florida. Um, though, interestingly enough, found this out from the folks at Fish Bites. Manuel Brasino landed this eight and a half pounder in South Florida that wasn't weighed until it was gutted. And I don't think the IGFA looks very kindly on that. So this was pre pretty much a nine pound pompano. That's your goal. And I would advise the fish bites, the, the bag of worms, those strip bites. That's what's working. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Of course, in addition to Pompano on the open beaches of the Jersey Shore, Monmouth, Ocean, Atlantic, and Cape May County, you've got those, um, you've got those kingfish, right? High lobe uh, fish bites, bag of worms, this little strips, uh, also uh, clam, even sand crab, some blood worm. You'll find an article online called Summer Surf Hail to the Kingfish. That's also written by Nick Konicheski a couple of years back. Go to thefisherman.com, look for that little magnifying glass, but all those tactics are there on how to catch kingfish. Very tasty panfish at the Jersey and, New, uh, and Delaware area. In fact, these kingfish are moving farther up into uh, southern, um, uh, southern shores of Long Island as well. Nick advises it's not really worth keeping those kingfish under eight inches, just not worth the filet. Andy Grossman, riptide bait and tackle in Brigantine, said he breads the, uh, the filets, he fries them up. They also know his guys who cook them whole, just like trout. Um, gutting them, broiling them with lemon and butter and garlic in aluminum foil. You could probably put it on the outside grill as well. Nick, of course, was at the uh, Quest for the Rings Championship in Atlantic City uh, this past weekend, showing off that July edition of the Fisherman Magazine, his interview with Coach Jimmy Johnson, Hall of Famer, NFL. Congrats. By the way, in that tournament, we talked about them last week, the crew of MJs, Michael Yako, Dante Suriente, Captain Frank Cresatelli, and all the boys out of Beach Haven, back-to-back -back tuna win in the quest for the ring, that nice big eye that we had in our video fishing forecast last week. Now, we didn't have any blue marlin on the leaderboard when we did this video, but lo and behold, taking top honors in the quest for the ring AC, it's another back-to-back -back championship. Vince Tagues, TLC, out of Avalon. 25-year-old Captain John Thompson on your left, shown alongside 17-year-old mate Cabe Scott on the right and their 568-pound blue that was worth more than $474,000 in last week's tournament. Congrats, boys. Tuna-wise, mentioned it before, it's been mostly hit or miss on those mid-range grounds. 
They're up, they're down. It's not on fire yet. Though Dennis Huber did say that he and his son Tommy have done well up and down the Jersey Shore from Barnegat Ridge down off of Sea Isle and Cape May, close enough to the beach on their smaller center console, Bluefin and Yellowfin both. He credits Andy at Riptide, who invested a lot in offshore inventory this season, but the Huber's trailer up and down the Jersey Shore to avoid the long runs to where the tuna might be biting in that particular time, still equipped with the safety gear, the EPIRB and the inReach and all of that. Another relatively short trip was made by Brian Page the other day, 19 miles off Sea Isle is where he went to score this 108 pound bluefin trolled on a Joe shoot. The key to success this week is keeping an eye on the NOAA weather uh, 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 forecast, not just days in advance, but the night before and even that morning. But I'll tell you what, when I look at it midweek, it looks a little sketchy at best. Plan your departures accordingly. Stay tuned to that NOAA weather. They're, they're certainly better than these network weather buffoons out of Philly in New York, that's for sure. In Tom P's offshore report this week, it's online at thefisherman.com. It's also out this week in the August edition. But he has Dave from Avalon Hodgepodge reporting that both King and Spanish mackerel, which we mentioned before, as well as bluefin to 50 pounds are just five miles out of Sea Isle and Avalon, Cape May County. You gotta be on the hunt. Think about those lumps. But again, King mackerel, big fish, skyrocketing after you catch them. Captain Dave DeGenero, who runs out of Barnegat, uh, Waretown area, he's gone through Barnegat Inlet. He said bluefin tuna and king mackerel are in the 20 to 30 mile range out of Barnegat Inlet on the high speed troll and also while drifting baits. Now inshore, of course, it's all about fluke at the Jersey Shore at this point in the summer. There are still some flatties out back. You may just have to stick and move to find out where they're sitting as water temperatures go on the increase, which they are, you're gonna have to find some of that deeper, cooler water. Once you find a patch of fish, stick with them. Uh, but you may have to go on the hunt depending on the stage of the tide. Avoid the long, aimless drifts though. If you catch a fish, keep working over that particular patch. But those fish are still in the back bays, of course. High roller behind Brigantine in Atlantic City, for example. Their Thursday trip last week, a lot of action. Um, with his slotch size, of course, I'm hearing from a lot of bay fishermen at this point in the season that the, the, their former 10 to 1 throwback to keeper ratio is down to about 3 or 5 to 1 at, at this point. Some folks are even saying 2 to 1. I know a lot of folks are not happy with the slot when it comes to the ocean fishing, but as far as folks still working the back bays, you still have that opportunity at the Jersey Shore to get that two slot and one over 18 inch limit. But we do have some sizable fluke reports coming, up, uh, coming in, especially from the north in that deeper water, inc including at that natural structure, uh, that glacial rock. I mentioned the rattlesnake before and all that rocky structure. Ken Peter, he deployed some secret fluke candy, also known as Fisherman's Choice salmon strips from the tackle box caught and released Yes, caught and released. This jumbo, 11 pounder on Monday aboard the Caitlin Nicole with Chris Mahan. Up into the lower Hudson, Captain Akira at True World showed off some recent fluke catches. So the big six inch gulp grubs in white or pink, Fish Bites Fight Club, those big grub baits, they are getting it done on the bucktail. And you should be looking in those deeper water areas right now. Now, out of Shark River Inlet, spotlighted in our, uh, um, our August edition, take a look at that. Captain Steve Spinelli of the Large Charter Skylarker put Dave Schwanbach of Willow Grove, PA, on this six and a half pounder on Friday. Of course, when you're working over that sticky stuff, high low rig you know your, your your traditional bucktail with gulp or fish bites and then your teaser whether you have a, a tin man floating jig head or just a straight hook or whatever kind of teaser good opportunity when you've got those gulp smaller baits on the teaser to get some of those sea bass as well so you can expect to get your black sea bass one fish limit in jersey pretty quickly like cheryl adler did this 3.8 pounder also on the skylarker now jesse beller First time fishing on his new jet ski, was three miles off the coast of Indian River. Bethany Beach, Delaware caught a 23 and a half incher. So yeah, like I said, 
Deeper water, bigger fluke, better numbers. That's all the New, New Jersey artificial reef complexes down along the old grounds. And of course, uh, the state of Delaware has so much great reef material where you can work as well. So down Seeker, Axel Carlson, Barnegat to Little Egg, of course, AC, Townsend, Wildwood, out to the Cape May Reef site and old grounds. Deeper water, heavy structure, plan to lose a few rigs, but some sizable fluke to be caught. It's all worth the sacrifice. A lot of spot. Lafayette, Cape May goodies at the Jersey Shore, not just in Cape May, but all throughout the Garden State. In our reports this week, we're getting a number of spot being reported on the Raritan Bay. Uh, that's fluke candy, man. Flu candy, those big spots. Same as with tuna as well. But rig the same way with you, you, that you would with your old school fluking techniques. You know, most of us are going bucktails with the, with the artificials on the bottom, a teaser artificial on the top. Go with a heavy sinker instead. The old three-way three rig, drift that spot right through the snout um, like you would with a killie, but it's a bigger bait. It's gonna go for bigger doormats. And of course, you're gonna need a bigger hook for that. If you are gunning for doormats, do not forget about the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. As a paid subscriber, $29.95 for the year, you already qualify to enter a fish. At that point, you just have to go into your tackle shop with your jumbo, weigh it, get it certified, and submit the information. And remember, if you're heading to Nantucket from the Jersey Shore this summer to take advantage of that Nantucket Shoals monster fluke bite, you qualify there too. That's why so many of the folks that read the Fisherman Magazine that subscribe travel a lot during the summer to go take advantage of the best bite. But let's check in with my friend Tim Smith right now and see where we stand with the latest leaderboard challenge. We could call this the week of the fluke with three heavyweights hitting the board. Waiting River, New York's Peter Shembri started the bidding with his eighth place 9.75 pounder. Phil Lopiccolo of Islip, New York landed himself in second place for the category with this 11.46 pounder. And our new fluke leader is Jeffrey Harrison with this 12.13 pound Nantucket doormat. We also had an eighth place Sea Robin landed in by Mike Pearson of Islip, New York at 2.50 pounds. All these high fluke scores whittled Luke Citarelli's final score down to 16 points and that 2.5 pound C Robin stole a point from Eddie Terrabile. The top three look like this. Luke Citarelli is sitting in third place with 16 points. Eddie Terrabile is in second with 20 points. And Bobby Cifarelli remains at the top with 25 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by a Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Sea Robin, yes. Porgies in New Jersey, it starts August 1st. Yes. Angel Shark, no. You won't find the angel shark on the leaderboard. I've had at least two of these reported uh, this week along the Jersey Shore reef structure, one at Garden State South, and this one from Dan Simler at Wildwood Reef on a bucktail gulp combo. Dan said it was like reeling in a VW. No Volkswagens in the Point Pleasant Elks tournament this past weekend, but a couple of 7.3 pounders in a tie that had to be broken based on the official rules. Congrats to every one of you who stayed on the leaderboard for some type of cash or prize uh, uh, tackle award at the end of that tournament. But Jenny Ackerman was on the scene for this past weekend's Elks Classic in Point Pleasant and has a quick report from the wall. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this week's Open Boat. We are on location for the Point Pleasant Beach Elks Fluke Tournament, 28th annual. This has been going on for a long time and this inlet is such a highlight place to come to every year. I remember being a little kid with my Barbie rod, catching some nice fluke here. We're reporting right now before the shotgun start kicks off the day for these fishermen to go out and wipe their feet on a nice doormat. And throughout this episode of Open Boat, I'm going to be giving you guys words of encouragement to get you hooked on tournament fishing. Whether they're from the surf or from the boat, they're equally all a great time. And all these tournaments offer an excellent opportunity for anglers to connect with their community. Another benefit for these tournaments is, of course, you have to pay to get in, but 
that money does go back into the community because the host of the tournament can be the local VFW or a nonprofit organization. So it's always an excellent opportunity to give back to the community and to donate to charity. New anglers to tournament fishing have an opportunity to make new friends, connect with the community, and just have an awesome time out on the water, catching fish, and keeping up with the leaderboard. So I encourage all of you, check out the Fisherman upcoming events and sign up for a tournament near you. Good luck. Back to the beach and Cocktail Blues have been in and out of the surf providing outstanding light tackle action for surf casters young and old up and down the Jersey Shore. I heard from American angler Carl Hartman this week out with Dr. Carl Chen who said they were teaching young Ian about how to tangle with the blues. But Ian had this to say about his educational experience. I taught myself. <laughs> okay. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows, you've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers, now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them, ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. Do not forget about Sheep's Head. The folks at Higby's in Fortescue said the convict fish are on the prowl on Delaware Bay, reporting that Rick Secitelli and Orlando Panico had five the other day on bloodworms along with a limit of bluefish. And it's not just by boat working the structure, but hit those bulkheads and jetty rocks for a tog tipped sand crab, uh, a tog jig tipped with sand crab, maybe fiddler crab. Uh, I also like shedder crab. You can pick them up at uh, Dave Scholl's place, which let me tell you something. If you want to go on the hunt for weak fish in the back bays, some of the calmer waters, a little piece of shedder crab on a white bucktail, just jigging it across the channels. That's great. Look for those at Dave's place. But uh, you can get these sheep's head from shore. As a matter of fact, George Golia is a regular viewer and said uh, he sent this shot in of a 14 and a half incher from shore in Cape May earlier this summer. So sheep's head, definitely an opportunity, especially along the inlet jetty rocks. I, I wouldn't be surprised in Manasquan and Manalo looking down, but certainly from Barnegat light south down into Delaware and the outer wall. So many opportunities to score in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region at this point in the summer, so much variety. Tony Butch and his son got into the triggers this week. And I know some boats like Captain Ralph Layer on the Last Lady out of Neptune, they are specifically on the hunt many times throughout the summer for these tasty morsels. I uh, hear you can leave them in the skin. I've not tried this. If you have, please let me know. You leave the meat in the skin. You fillet it off of the body for those sheep's head. You're going to need one of those Dexter, uh, Dexter knives with a serrated edge to get through the tough skin, and then you can just peel it off. But folks tell me they just take that little bowl full of meat, put some butter and spices on top, put it in the grill, put the grill down, and it actually bakes in there like a cup. Give it a shot. If you do, let me know. I have yet to try it. Do not forget about the sweet water, of course, all these tasty vittles we're talking about. But if you're heading inland to the Poconos, northwest New Jersey, the streams, lakes, plenty of options uh, throughout the area. Five-year-old Liam Pinellos of Pompton Lakes all smiles with his biggest large mouth to date. He, of course, doesn't need a fishing license, but it's a worthy investment if you want to try something different this week or sometime this summer. It's not just largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. New Jersey has walleye. We have, a, we have salmon, land lake locked, land lake locked sa salmon, those hybrid stripers, and of course, enormous muskie. Give it a shot. No George this week, he's getting hitched. Congrats, my friend, to both you and the new missus. Striped bass, regulatory talks. We'll pick up again next week when the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission meets in Alexandria, Virginia. They're meeting at the Weston Crystal City. In my old government days, I spent a lot of time working out of there, but they're gonna review the emergency, uh, the, the emergency action on striped bass. That's the action that sent us into the 28 to 31 inch slot. Next week, they're gonna look at that and they may continue it from that point on. I'm not sure if next week's the meeting or if they do it in the fall. I will know more next Thursday where we may be headed, but if you want more information, if you wanna sit in on that meeting, go to asmfc.org. 
Hey, on Wednesday, August 2nd, my good friend, Captain Erwin Heinrich of Scales and Tails will be giving a fluke seminar. Not just any fluke seminar, a doormat double digit fluke seminar. That's at the Proving Ground restaurant in Highlands, New Jersey from 6 to 9 p.m. It's presented by the Staten Island Tuna Club. For details, you can visit the real seat, I understand, here in Bri uh, not far from where I am right now in Brielle, but you can also call Chip at 201-390-6544. Um, it's not hanging behind me right now, of course, but a lot of folks, when I'm doing it from inside of my desk, they ask me about that guitar on the wall. That's a Martin D1R, bought off the floor, Nazareth, Pennsylvania, back in 96, 97. It's my, my best friend. She's been with me ever since, and yes, I play it every day. So, as a guitar player, a hack, if you will, does that entitle me to an opinion on Jason Aldean's small town controversy? I do love playing outlaw country songs, but no, no, it doesn't. I will say this though. I find it funny that Aldine was the country artist that suddenly got the cancellation notice. Apparently, the sensitivity police, they missed Beer For My Horses by Toby Keith and Willie Nelson, God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood, and especially Am I the Only One by Aaron Lewis. Of course, there's always any song by Hank Williams Jr. or David Allen Coe, which are the songs that I play in the neighborhood to drive the neighbors absolutely bonkers. Yeah, so what? I'm a piney who loves American-made guitars, new fishing rods, and guns. What do you want from me? Hey, listen, have a wonderful weekend. Stay cool. Hopefully the weather turns out just fine. And again, if you're thinking about trying your shot in the offshore grounds, make sure you take a look at that no weather. Middle of the week doesn't look great, but man, it's like throwing darts at a dartboard with these weather folks. Catch them up. I'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.